If you have bees in your wall or your ceiling, um, behind the sheetrock or the side of your barn wall, you might choose to get a beekeeper to do this kind of job, or you might think, I'll just do it myself. I'll kill them with some insecticide, or I'll pay an exterminator to kill that colony. Or you might even try to do it with some spray-on foam insulation and fill their hole. But none of those things really work because, first of all, the bees can chew through the foam insulation, and you don't really want to trap all those bees inside and suffocate them and have them die. For the same reason, you don't want to kill them inside and have them die, which is that one, they smell when they're dead. Uh, there's quite a lot of bees. They'll smell like any dead animal in your wall would smell. Also, all the honey that they've collected up till that point is still in there, and it will slump and drip and possibly ferment down inside your wall if there's no live bees to take care of it. The third thing is the bees in the area that live in the woods or in beekeepers' hives might come and rob that undefended hive's honey out, eat that poison honey, and then they are sick or dead. So it's best to call a beekeeper. These bees are living inside of the wall between the inner wall and the outer wall, a hollow space that's kind of like the inside of a hollow tree, which is where bees naturally would live if they were on their own. But this must have been a swarm that came and liked the look of this. It had a small hole, it was sheltered. Uh, and we could take this beehive apart from the outside and take this siding off this nice little building. But I kind of was reluctant to do that because it's such a cute little building. So we looked inside and it's just a simple sheet of plywood and uh, we're gonna work inside. You, you always wanna check it out, see which one is possible and where it's best. The homeowner has bought new beekeeping equipment for when he starts working with these bees after we get them out of their wall here. All the field bees know this spot, so he's going to have to have his beehive right here at this spot. Um, he's got the typical telescoping outer cover, inner cover, and two deep boxes. And he has some of them with plastic wax coated foundation in them and others ready for us to put those bee combs into. They're just empty wooden frames. And we'll be working with these at first. These bees have coated the inside of their home here with propolis. And when it gets really hot, sometimes it oozes out. Um, this is not honey dripping out. It's, it's warmed propolis coming down in these little drips. So the colony is just about here, and I wanted to describe how you find exactly where it is um, through plywood or sheetrock. It's very easy from the heat. Um, it, you put your hand on the wall, it's pretty warm, 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 until you get to the next stud and you're past their area. It's cold. Right here is cold. And also up and down, you can figure out how tall the, the colony is. And that's from the warmth of all the bees and brood. And you also can hear it, but that doesn't help so much because the sound fills the whole cavity. And it basically just tells you about where they are. The heat tells you where they really are. Mm -hmm. So this is the piece we're going to take out. It's about a four by eight piece of plywood. And we're going to try not to break it so the homeowner can easily fix this hole in his wall later. Quite often, it's not the beekeeper that does repairs. It's the homeowner that does the repairs. So try to make it easy on the person and uh, keep things neat and tidy. So to take bees out of a wall or ceiling or a floor, there's some basic things you need. First of all, wooden frames so that you can attach the comb that you get into frames for your hive. And this frame I've prepped with a system that I like. A beekeeper in Cape Cod named Andy told me about this and it's sort of making a string bed across the back of a frame with staples and cotton string. And it helps when you lay the comb on there and get ready to rubber band it to have this little uh, sort of trampoline area to lay the comb on. We've just done that with one today to show you the idea. Second of all, some tools such as hammers or pry bars to get the wall open 
And that could get really complicated. The more you do this job, you might invest in certain kinds of saws, etc. But we're doing a pretty simple job and it's just prying boards off. So we just have a few hammers and hive duels, extension cords, an empty bucket to put any messed up comb or scraps in for carrying away later. I have a bucket of water here for cleanup. Plenty of water to drink. Messy rubber glove. I have the smoker here, but we're probably not going to use it because we don't want to drive the bees in away from us like we normally use our smoker for. We want to keep them where they are and see them all when we're doing this kind of job. So you don't use much smoke. The second reason is if it's in someone's house, you don't want to use the smoke because it's smelly. And also you might be shooting sparks into their wall. These are the usual uh, gauntleted leather gloves that a person might get as they start beekeeping. Um, for normal beekeeping at Better Bee, we use rubber gloves, nitrile, very thin, and they give you a lot of dexterity as you're working. And I also like these as I work on cutouts because of rubber bands and trying to deal with thin things like that, but also because it tends to be a pretty messy job and I don't like the way leather gloves act after they get soaked with nectar and, and honey. In order to get the comb to stay in our wooden frames, we use number 33 rubber bands because they will not only go vertically, but all the way from left to right. And we put quite a few rubber bands on to keep that comb in there until the bees can attach all the edges to the wooden frame. And we also have a good clean surface and a knife so that we can really precisely trim the comb to fit in the frame and not just squish it in there. And then we're going to take those frames of comb and put them into the box and make sure it's covered between working with each frame so that it stays as warm and humid as possible in there because there's very few bees on the combs at this point. So we're going to go inside Take the board off the wall, which Greg has already loosened up for us, and vacuum some bees off of the surface of the combs and get some uh, ability to grip the combs after we trim them. We'll bring them out here and trim them more and put them into the frames with rubber band. Greg's just trying to gently encourage each nail and each bit of that plywood off because we don't want anything to be a sudden release. Um, we, we're not using smoke here and we don't want to have huge amounts of bees suddenly shocked by any movement. So it's all pretty deliberate. Yeah, when, when we opened this up, a bunch of stuff started sifting down. Um, this probably has bits of wax, bits of dead bees, propolis, um, probably a lot of mouse refuse too. Once I found a bumblebee nest below a honeybee nest, once I found about two gallons of seeds that a mouse had stored that came flowing out like a, a seed waterfall. So let's try like a, you know, like a little wiggle on the right, a little on the left, and we'll see what we get. A little bit attached. I'm getting a kind of a stretchy feeling like there's a little comb attached to the middle of this. Try to flex it loose. It's mostly the top that's holding on now. Yeah. Maybe we do have to go up. We'll try going up. Um, let's get this cleaned off and move up a little closer in case anything really falls. All right, that's good. Okay, there's some foam coming with it. Just yeah. go slow. It's starting to 
peel back. Let it let it peel back. A little wiggle. I'm gonna try to just cut that one because it's just trying to let go of the wall, the wall that we're pulling on. All right, a little bit more. Okay, everything is separated. So let's see what we can do. Here. A little higher. Our ankles are tied shut. Let me do it right. Many people pull it from the wall. Maybe a little. Let's just try to raise it. I'm going to turn on the Colorado BVAC now. Try to clear some of those combs so I can have an easier time grasping it and cutting it. How strong of a suction should you use to suck up bees with the Colorado BVAC? Adjust it so that when the end of the tube is just barely touching bees, they're sucked into it. Too much suction will make your tube suck right onto the comb. And also, it will suck up nectar, which then coats the bees, and they're all wet and sticky, and they can't breathe, and they die inside of the vacuum. Too little suction, and you're barely going to get any bees, and your time will be wasted. You'll understand this with experience. So that's how it's done. Oh my gosh, this is all honeycomb in this one. Wow. It's two bays. <laughs> this is a solid packing of junk down here. But this side of the stud, this is all honeycomb. And this compartment has nothing. So, you never know what you're going to find. All right, that's loose. Since this comb we're removing from the wall has no frames to support it, we have to grasp it with our fingers. And since we don't really know where the queen is, and it's dark, it's really great to be able to mm -hmm. vacuum the bees mm -hmm. off of it first before cutting and grasping it. Later, the bees in the bee vac will be reunited with the brood in your own equipment. in there. So, you know, that's about as good as you get. Um, unless you're lucky with bigger pieces. So we put this in the box. Put the cover on. So it was hanging that way. So you just gotta like trim it. Something's gonna be wasted. If that's empty up there, I would waste that. You know, maybe just decide. I'll bring another piece. <laughs> tell in the dark if this was brood or what it was. 
It might just be drone comb and honey. Yeah, this piece isn't really quality enough to rubber band in. It's just drone comb and some stiff honeycomb. And we'll let the bees get into the other box on their own here. I'm going to take that out later. What I do when I'm doing a cutout is clear an area of comb with a vacuum, then I cut that piece, carry it out, and tie it into a frame. Just go piece by piece, slow and steady. Try to make it about as big as a, a deep frame, so there's not much tiny bits. Yeah. Could you grab this one, Greg? Because I'm afraid this lower part might drop. There we go. You got it? Yeah. This was the back side that was not vacuumed. I forgot which way it was. I'm going to look at the angle, the angle of the cells on the side. And they're actually supposed to go that way because they angle down. Still, this little triangle is not getting used. I'm going to trim off this drone comb and use that little triangle. Because it's, it's worker brood. I'm going to put two around the long way because of that video. thing about the bee vac is that you can get difficult swarms with it like a swarm that's within a chain link fence or in a rose bush that they don't want you to trim or cut the branches and the bees up at the top of this cavity are dangling in a clump almost like a swarm so I want to show you how to get them without hurting them so this big puffy bunch of bees up here is almost solid bees and what you want to do is sort of Sweep along the bottom, you know, don't just push it right into the center because so many bees will get sucked into the tube that it'll clog it temporarily. And it won't be making anything faster, it'll make it, be making it slower, really. So just be methodical along the bottom of the clump or the swarm, if that's what you're doing, and they'll slowly disappear into your tube. 
Without a bee vac, these clumped bees with no comb to crawl on would be difficult to collect. Another thing the Colorado bee vac is really good for is clearing the last bees out of a cavity after you've gotten all the comb and also clearing bees out of the room, for instance, when they all fly over to the window while you're working. So if we could open this window, which is just a piece of plexiglass nailed in, I would have opened it so that the bees could just keep going outside and coming back to their entrance. And also, if you're working in a bedroom or a, a kitchen or someplace where there's bees in the wall, keep the lights off so that the brightest thing around is the window and they go towards the window. Yep. So sometimes honeycombs are just recently made and they're pretty squishy, like this one is rather delicate. Uh, but these older ones are very stiff. The older ones that are stiff is the only ones that I would band into frames. The rest, they're just too gushy and you, you just should put them on a big plate or a brownie pan or something and put them in the hive at the top of the frames. Put a box around it and put the cover on real tight. So then the bees can get to it and nibble out all that honey and clean the mess of wax and then you could take that out later and put frames in that top box. These are really quite stiff, so we banded them into a frame. The bees are going to attach these pieces all together, but right now it's still pretty wiggly since it was two narrow pieces on top of each other. It's not really the best, but that's what we had to work with, and we want to make sure they have some honey in there. The honey that the bees have made is their honey, and they need it to eat, after you've taken their hive out of the wall, they need that honey. But if there's so much honey that there's extra for you, if nobody has sprayed the hive before, feel free to crush it and strain it. It's really very nice. It's comb honey and it's delicious. You can eat the wax and chew it up and then spit it out or you can chew it up and swallow it. We've got all the bee brood banded into frames and we're going to reunite them with the adult bees which we vacuumed into the Colorado Bee Vac. So just to make things easier I'm going to take the hose off and make sure that this is shut first, a little slider, take off the hose and open up the hive. There's just a few, a few adults here. And also I wanted to point out that we did lose our entrance reducer. We have a block of wood and we further reduced it with a bunch of crushed grass because we want these folks to be having a small entrance to defend. There's a lot of drippy honey that broke out of the combs and it's on the bottom board now and we don't want to have a whole bunch of robbing start. Take off the lid. That's just full of bees. Kind of heavy. Line it up. Now we got to pull the tray so they can go down in. Unlatch the little latch. leave it to have the bees just descend to the box that has the frames in it with the brood or you could shake it and make them all drop down onto the brood if for instance you need the bee back again right away. We're going to just put the cover on for now and come back later and make sure they've gone down in. I ended up tapping on the screen to get the bees to let go of it and drop down to the brood frames. Then I added the second deep box we had ready. 
Remember at the start I showed you the frames with the foundation already in them? Another way to get the bees out of the vacuum is to turn it upside down and put it on the bottom board and put the brood box above it. Then slide out the metal tray and the adult bees in the vacuum will walk upwards to the brood. You can remove the vacuum the next day when you check the bottom board to clean it. So we've got it really well scraped out. Nearly all the bees are vacuumed up and we corked up the outside hole with some wax and uh, whatever we had at hand so no more field bees would just keep coming in here. Um, and now we're ready to staple in some insulation so that future swarms won't be able to use this cavity. And uh, don't stuff it in, just staple it in at fluffy like you normally would for any insulation. We've got to use a few pieces because this is a pretty wide cavity, but we'll make it work. Even if you caulk really well outside, it's not going to stop future swarms from getting in because the cloth will dry up and fall out or cracks will appear and to fill it up is really the key thing. So that took us about three hours and we've gotten finished and tidied up. I uh, just want to say a few more things about those frames with the rubber bands that we were putting the brood into uh, and that one frame that had the string and the staples. Uh, those are not going to be frames that you keep for five years or so like other brood frames. They're, they're just wonky and tippy and they don't fit nicely next to each other with the pieces of wool and the irregularities. So probably at the end of winter the bees will all have risen up to their second deep box and that would be a good time to take all those odd combs out of those foundationless frames at the bottom and just melt them down. If you were in a situation where you wanted to take away the bees after you remove the colony from a wall, you should definitely let them sit there until dusk. You might have to vacuum them off the wall at that point if they had formed a clump on the wall, and then strap up the hive really well, put it on the truck at dusk, and take it away, and unite those bees in the vacuum with the, the big batch of bees that's in your hive. In any case, the next few days is important because of all the dripping from cut edges of honeycombs and also that the bees are cleaning up things that got vacuumed up that are really just garbage or they're trimming the edges as they attach the comb to the frames and a lot of stuff will be on the bottom board and you don't want to have a big drift of stuff on the bottom board because hive beetle larvae will love to get in there and eat that stuff. So check your bottom board. If it's a solid bottom board, actually take the boxes off and scrape it. Um, this is a screen bottom board, so the person would pull the tray out of the back. But be aware there could be a drift of stuff on top of the screen too, so check those things. We also need to clear that screened bottom board so that we can put in an oiled sticky board and then collect varroa mites that are falling through the screen. And we have to do that to find out whether this colony has a high or a low parasite load. If it's got a lot of mites, we need to treat it as soon as possible. We also need to go in and make sure that we either have found a healthy queen laying eggs, raising new brood, or we need to go in and identify queen cells that the bees have made, which will tell us that the queen was either killed or damaged or lost during our extraction from the wall. 